Welcome, I'm Pastor Steve. This is Grove Church. This is our online church service. We're going to talk about uh, the invitation that God gives each of us. So I'm so glad you're taking space to connect with us online. Uh, Share this with your friends. Participate right in the comments. Uh, We'd love to hear you and see you. This is not uh, just a TV show where we watch passively. This is worship. So uh, welcome to Grove Church, and we're so glad that you're with us. We know there's a lot of things going on, so to help us focus on God, we're going to reflect on these scriptures for 1 Kings. We call it a call to worship because it's an invitation for us to be present with God. Hear and participate in these words. Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants, who continue wholeheartedly in your way. Praise be to the Lord who has given rest to his people, Israel, just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all the good promises he gave through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave us nor forsake us. May he turn to our hearts to him, to walk in obedience to him, and keep the commands, decrees, and laws he gave our ancestors. If we're honest, we have not followed all those laws. We have not done exactly what God has wanted us to do. There's been times we've held back. But God is good and gracious and forgiving. We have his grace to forgive us and give us fresh starts. So I'm going to lead us in this prayer of confession, seeking God's restoring work in our life. Connect your heart with mine as we seek God's face. We know that nothing is able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Let us in freedom confess the wrong we have done. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we've been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear this good news of God's amazing work from the scriptures. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. I declare you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. As God has given us peace to Christ, so let us pass signs of Christ's peace and forgiveness to one another. Don't be shy. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. So in the comments section, share greetings of Christ's peace, his welcome, his forgiveness and restoration. Welcome. We're so glad you're with us. Peace be with you and your household. And now will the children please gather around as we have a special message for them. Hey kids, it's Pastor Steve. I remember I was in this basketball team once and uh, I never took a shot. So it was the last game and my whole team was, was screaming, Steve, take a shot, take a shot, take a shot because they wanted me to score. We were losing, but they wanted me to take that shot. I could only choose. I could either take the shot or hold the ball. I can't do both, right? You can't, if you're gonna take a shot, you gotta let go of the ball. If you're gonna hold on the ball, you're never gonna take a shot. 
Today in our Bible story, uh, Joshua tells people to choose this day who they will serve. Choose who's going to be God because they can't serve idols and God. They have to take a shot. They have to make a choice. They have to choose. I want you to know that, um, oh, and, and the people that Joshua's talking to, their parents were the same ones who went through the Red Sea. So the parents knew and experienced God, but it was the kid's turn to choose this day whom you will serve. I want you to know that even if your parents love God, which is great and amazing, you have to make a choice. You have to choose, yes, Jesus, you will be my forever friend. You have to take a shot because you can't both hold the ball and shoot. You can't both be uh, God's forever friend, love Jesus, and not love Jesus and not be his forever friend. And I hope you make the same Josh, the decision Joshua made. Joshua said, yes, me and my house, me and all my family, we're going to serve the Lord. And that is the best decision you can make. You know that God loves you. Jesus died on the cross for you. And he and I want you to make that choice. So what are you going to do? Are you going to serve God? Or are you going to be Jesus' forever friend? Or are you going to do something else and hold on to the ball? You have to make that choice. You're, I'm praying for you. Your parents um, are talking to you and maybe they want you to do something. But there comes a point in your life, even as a kid, that you have to say, yes, Jesus, I want to be your forever friend. Yes, I, I want to be your child of God. Yes, I'm going to be a Christian. Yes, I believe in you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for forgiving my sins. And I want to be your forever friend. I want to be a Christian. I want to be saved. So make that choice. Decide today whom you will serve. Are you going to take a shot? Can I pray for you? God, we thank you, Lord, that you are good. Lord, we thank you that you invite us to say yes to your yes. Help us to be forever friends. Help our kids to know that you are there and that only you give life. Thank you for the goodness, for the love. Help us to make the right choices and the choice to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let us worship God together.
Today our scripture reading is from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, through 20, uh, verse 1 through 26. So it's a long one. So if you have your Bible in front of you, uh, get it open up, read along, follow. I'll be reading uh, in the New International Version. So friends, listen to these words from the book that we love, Joshua 24, 1 through 26. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshiped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I signed the hill country of Seir to Esau but Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there and brought you out. When I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians, then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them from before you, and you took possession of their land. When Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam. So he blessed you again and again, and I delivered you out of his hand. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites. But I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you. Also the two Amorite kings, you did not do it with your own sword and bow. So I gave you a land on which you did not toil, and cities which you did not build, and you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now fear the Lord 
and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors' worship beyond the Euphrates River in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose lands you're living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord and serve other gods. It was the Lord, our God himself, who brought us out of our parents up out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, you're not able to serve the Lord. He's a holy God. He's a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he's been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. And on that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people and there at Shechem he reaffirmed for them the decrees of the laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and sit up there under the oak near the holy place. Friends, the word of the Lord. Let us pray. God, we thank you, Lord, that your word is a gift. Lord, we pray that as we also hear your word, that we may find you and encounter you once again. Amen. If you were re, uh, with us recently, this recap of scripture might sound familiar to you. We talked about the Israelites crossing the Red Sea and then receiving the Ten Commandments from God. Today, we just read a story of a generation la uh, later, because those who crossed the Red Sea, they all died before, uh, before they entered this land. And here we hear Moses' predecessor, Joshua, give these challenging words, this invitation to the next generation of Israelites. So Joshua starts way back and gives them a recap of the history of their people, of their ancestors, of their previous generations and what God did for them. And also how Abraham's family long, long ago served pagan gods and worshipped and the people in their land worshipped idols and foreign gods. The people there in the land that they have inherited, that God handed over to them, had specific gods for specific things. Right? They had a god of war and a god of fertility. And, uh, but the god who rescued them from freedom was the god of the Bible, the god of their forefathers. And Joshua is recapping all this, talking about uh, what gods were in the land before they got there, the gods they experienced, their ancestors, the god uh, of the Bible who has guided them through freedom. He's given them all their options, given them all the rich, uh, robust background history. And he's saying, if you want to worship the Lord, the God who freed us from Egypt, the God who delivered your parents from that, you, that is an option, that is a choice. And then throw away the idols that you may have found or brought with you. Throw away those false gods and serve the genuine God. This is not a new covenant, a new thing he's making them. He's actually representing them the same similar covenant that their parents said yes to. He's telling the same promise to a new generation. And letting them know a new opportunity that they are at a choice, this crossroads. Are they going to serve the Lord? Or are they going to serve other gods? Maybe they haven't realized because they've kind of maybe uh, hedged their bets and served God in certain circumstances, but keep these ancestral idols or idols of the land there close at hand. And he's saying, make a clear distinction. Make a choice. 
respond to this ancient promise that was given to your parents? Are you going to choose the Lord? Are you going to choose those other gods? Well, it's true that we probably haven't heard a speech as challenging as Joshua gave. But I want you to know that there's regular invitations to respond to the revelation of God. Even now, right, you've made a commitment to be here, to connect online, and there's other places to go, there's other websites, there's other YouTube videos uh, to watch, maybe there's notifications that are popping up on your screen that are, just, that are letting you know there's other things going on. But you've made a commitment to spend this time listening to God and God's word. You could have been somewhere else, but you've made a decision. You've chosen and said, hey, I'm going to spend these 45 minutes with Grove Church today. And now, and then a little bit later, you're going to have to decide, okay, I heard the scripture of Joshua. What am I going to do with it? Right? We have reflection questions at the end because the revelation of God demands a response. You're going to figure out, is this just going to be interesting, maybe learn a couple cool stories, maybe learn some Bible facts? Or how are you going to respond to the word of God? A few minutes ago, we had a a prayer of confession and the words of assurance, and you decided to respond to that. Did you decide to ask for, uh, when you heard, or ask the, the prompt to seek God's forgiveness? Were you moved to confess and show those ugly parts of your life to God, maybe out loud or in your mind? Did you respond to the words of assurance, the promise of God's forgiveness and new work? Right? We're constantly given these invitations. We're constantly given these choices, these crossroads of how are we going to respond to the revelation of God. God, who has done the work of salvation in our life, he's the one who, who calls us to fulfill our role in this covenant to respond to what he's already done, right? God has done by God's grace. He finished the work on the cross. It's through Jesus we have the the power of forgiveness and the promise of new life. So while God, Father, Son, and Spirit has done this amazing work, we have regular opportunities of how are we going to respond. How are we going to respond to God's grace? How we're going to respond to the work of the Spirit that he has been doing in us, the conviction of the Spirit. Are we going to commit our lives to follow God? Are we going to commit our whole household to be about God's business? When I was a kid, I kind of misunderstood some of the aspects of responding to God. I went to church, it was a good church, uh, but we didn't have times of confession. So what I ended up doing was when I heard a moving sermon, a moving passage of scripture, I gave my life to Christ like I never was a Christian in the first place. The daily altar calls was a place to come, and I I thought that I lost my salvation from one Sunday to another Sunday. Because I did not I thought I had to be get saved and saved again. So every Sunday, when the, there was an invitation, a preacher gave an altar call. I, I knew that I've sinned since last week. I knew that I, my life wasn't living up perfectly to God. There's good things that God wanted me to do that I probably didn't do. There were things that I did that weren't uh, up to the standards of God's holiness. So I thought in my early days that that was my, then I blew it. I was out of God's grace. I was uh, hellbound for that week until I asked Jesus to clean my eraser, uh, to use an eraser to clean the chalkboard of sins. And I was afraid that I would die before I asked God to quickly uh, wipe away those sins. And then if I died somewhere in between, that I would be uh, far from him from all eternity. But what I needed to do was seek God's forgiveness and restoration. I needed to commit my walk to him. Knowing that God's saving work is substantive. But what is weak is my commitment, my follow-up. My choosing this moment who I will serve. Choosing this minute who I will serve. Choosing when temptation comes my way. Choosing saying, no, I will not fall for temptation. I will not do that again. I will serve the Lord in this instance. 
Or when there's an opportunity to do good that God prepared in advance and I just want to, uh, you know, kind of not waste my time or energy. And realize, no, no, no. This is an opportunity God has me to be an agent of blessing. This is an opportunity God has given me to love my neighbor. And I will choose to serve the Lord in this moment. Right? It's that we're constantly given these opportunities to choose the way of God. To walk in the way he's prepared us. To depend on the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Joshua here in this invitation that Shechem asked them to throw away their gods. He reminds them of their background, reminds them that this land is full of idols. Your way, way, way back ancestors worshipped idols. He talks about their history with God. Their history with God, that God has done good things in their lives and freed them. And God was the God who guided them, their parents. For those of you who have been part of Grove Church for 30 years or maybe just 30 minutes, we realize there's a context to your faith. There's a, a backstory. Some of them I know very well. Some of them I used to know little uh, snippets. But we have to realize that that's, it's easier to be a follower of Christ together. It's easier when we have that collective faith story that we tell, that we remind ourselves of God's goodness, God's faithfulness. When you have other people that are walking alongside with you, I've told one or two of you who said, you know what, online church isn't for you because you need the face-to-face. -face. You need the, the encouragement and the kick in the butt sometimes. Because it's hard to be a believer when you're disconnected. It's hard to be a believer and, and know uh, that God is at work when you're living life on your own. So let's have a Shechem moment right now. And just acknowledge some of the experiences that you may have. They maybe don't all apply to all of you, right? Because we all have different stories. We're all on different, we're, we're in the same destination, but we're in different places in our journey. And as adults, we take responsibility for our faith, right? We don't blame other people for where we are spiritually, but we acknowledge, we acknowledge that we've been shaped, we've been encouraged, we've been discouraged by our context. Some of you have had a good supportive families. Right? You've, you've been blessed. Maybe you have a godly parents have been a role model of how faith would be. Godly grandparents who have prayed and read scripture and introduced you to Jesus and brought you to church. But some of you uh, didn't have that or didn't have as much as you needed. Maybe your dad wasn't around. Maybe your mom was busy fighting her own battles. Maybe your family modeled dysfunction and unhealth. So if you were to label the unknown God, the, uh, the, if you, the unnamed gods in your family tree, they might be uh, the God of fast money or the God of broken promises. Maybe even uh, the deities of alcohol and drugs, even perversion. Maybe you've had similar powers at play in your household and you still struggle with those powers, those influences that are tugging at you or seeking your allegiance or giving you temptations. And you're trying to break free. And you have this constant conflict of who will I serve? What desire will I follow? Where will I spend my energy? Who will get the best of my attention? But those are not the only influences in your life. Like those who heard Joshua's crying and invitation to choose. You have had some experiences with God. Capital G-O-D, God. The God of the Bible. That you've experienced in some ways God's grace. You've tasted a sweet freedom that Christ has brought. Maybe you know that yourselves, that like a footprint poem, you know that God has carried you during hard and difficult times. He's carried you through seasons of life. Maybe you're one of those people who have taken time to recognize the blessings of God, that you have breath in your lungs today, that you have, uh, you've been given things because of God's goodness. For those who stood before Joshua, stood at a crossroads that we too find ourselves today. We have a choice in whom will we serve. Who will be guiding our guiding force in our daily lives? 
Who will be influencing where we go and where we invest our time and energy? Where will we hang our hopes? Where would we find our solace and comfort? We've been, uh, we have the God of the Bible, we have the Holy Spirit. Are you going to be all in? Are you going to be sold out to God? Or do we have to be honest and say there's other lowercase gods that we're serving, that we're following? In my youth, uh, there was a time where I realized I was going to marry my girlfriend. I realized I was going to propose. And, uh, and I realized as I was thinking of that, envisioning that future together with my wife, um, I realized that there were still some associations that I had to break. So I did something that, uh, you know, might have, uh, you know, you be the judge if it's over dramatic or not, you know, right? You could write in the comments, over dramatic or, or yeah, okay, you be the judge of that. But I had some pictures, some gifts, some mementos from uh, ex girlfriends. And I wondered, why am I holding on to these? These relics of past relationship and the future life I'm envisioning, they have no room. Right? What, I'm going to get married and put, have a junk drawer of, of past relationships in there? So I realized these are things I have to let go of. I have to get rid of. So what does a guy who's uh, in love with this girl, knows he's going to marry her, what does he do with all his ex-girlfriend souvenirs? Well, I decided to uh, burn it all. Right? I decided to burn it. I, I remember going to the backyard. I was living in my parents' house to the backyard, and there was snow on the ground. And I just bit a little, built a little bonfire there in the suburbs and lived, lit it aflame because I was going to make a clean start. I was in some ways burning the bridges because I was not going back. I was all in on my future. I was committed to this choice, to this relationship. And I was making a choice for my future wife and realizing that uh, all others had to be uh, gone, thrown out in one way or another. Over dramatic, you be the judge. Joshua and the scripture today tells the crowd to throw away their gods, throw away their idols. So these are statues that have meaning and purpose that people pray to and have hopes hinged on. They, there are people who uh, people are committed to them. They have priests that, that kind of facilitate that. So getting thrown away an idol is not just like throwing away some uh, artwork. This is a big deal. This is turning an object of devotion, an object where people ascribe power and honor to and and recognizing that it's trash. This could be seen as sacrilegious on the best case and scary and, you know, kind of provoking spirits on the worst case scenario, if you consider that supernatural. But the call was to go all in. Right? You can't just keep those idols in your house and say that you serve the Lord. You can't just keep these uh, former gods around just in case you and, and uh, God don't work out. You can't keep your main prayers to God and keep your subset-specific prayers to lesser deities. The call was to go all in. It's hard to throw idols in the trash. It's hard to recognize that gods that you may have been depending on are now a waste product. It's hard to burn things that you'll never get back. We can't be part-time Christians, though. We can't live the Jesus life, then submit to the gods of our past, the gods of self, the gods of lust, the gods of money, whatever gods were propped up in your life. We have to throw away the idols. And sometimes we have to throw it away even more because it, it keeps on popping up every once in a while, right? Sometimes there's that conflict, that there's that battle. I realize, you know, that, that the Lord has, is no longer the primary focus and that we've gone to our old ways and we have to recommit, take those idols and realize they have no place in your household. Joshua's model of recommitment was not only an individual one, but him, these, these words that maybe you've seen uh, on, you know, etched on wood art and, and, and I've seen them on canvas bags. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. He's saying his whole entire household is being devoted to God. His area of influence 
his relationship network. Right? He's saying, I'm going in on God and everything that I touch, every relationship that I have, all the people that I care about, I'm just giving that all to God. That's all under the Lordship of God. I, I will not let idolatry happen under my watch. Everything I have, everyone I love, everything I'm hoping for is under God. At Grove, we have a lot of pioneer parents. Parents who didn't have a Christian upbringing, who didn't have the role models of faith, but find themselves trying to live out, live it out in a way that uh, they didn't have modeled for them. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're trying to reorient your household. You are uh, d- you don't want to serve God on your own, but you want your spouse or significant other or your children or maybe your parents to come under the lordship of Christ. You're trying to break those patterns of dysfunction. You want your children to be spared of some of the brokenness of sin that you've experienced. You experience some heartbreak and some horrible stuff. And if you, you know, and maybe if you were living are the people who, who made you go through that, and maybe if their life was submitted under God, that would have spared you some. And you want your children to be spared. So you don't want to just follow God on your own. We're all in. You want to bring the entire tent of relationships with you. You and your household to serve the Lord. That's an invitation for you this week. Don't don't just serve God alone. alone. Bring everything. Because if you realize it's the people that we love, sometimes they drag us away from God. Sometimes uh, the people that we love become idols or distractions. Sometimes we find ourselves chasing after things that we think we want, and they hurt us in the end. So the whole household, the whole house, how can our households be places and relationships in a community where we love the Lord? Don't live life on autopilot. Be intentional. Make a choice to whom you serve. If God is not love, if Jesus is not the way, the truth, and the life, then follow some lowercase g God. Live life on your own terms. Don't waste your time playing church because it's just a waste of time. But if Jesus is indeed Lord, if God is God and the Holy Spirit is active, if heaven is real, then serve God. Serve the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham and Moses and Joshua and Isaac. And mention that person in your life that has blessed you with knowing God. Right? Follow their God. Follow the God of scriptures who invites you to commit your ways to him. Embrace the hope that God has. And bring all your relationships Bring all the web of what you're involved in under the household of God, under the sovereignty of God. And moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day, choose whom you will serve, you and your household. Let us close in prayer. Gracious God, Lord, we pray that you help us to make this choice. We pray that we may commit to this ancient invitation. Lord, if it's the first time, Lord, if we're doing something new, give us the boldness to turn away and throw out those idols, those other things we've been leaning on. Help us to be followers of you, Lord. Remind us of your truth. Make us a new person by the power of your spirit. And Lord, for those of us who have discovered and stumbled upon idols in our way, give us the courage to throw them out. Give us the boldness, Lord, not to play church or play religion or play Christian, but to be an all-in follower of you. And Lord, I pray for the households here, Lord. I pray for the parents, God, that are trying to raise godly children, Lord, that have struggles. I pray for the single parents, God, that are trying to play both roles. 
maybe that are praying. I pray for those people who are, who are praying for a future spouse or co-parent. God, I pray that you uh, give them the right person. And Lord, I pray that not only you give them the right person, Lord, I pray that you hold back anyone, Lord, that is detrimental to the work you want to do in their life. That you open their spiritual eyes, Lord, to see. That you protect them from wolves. That you guide and protect their hearts. Lord, I pray for the children. I pray that uh, our children may know you as Lord and Savior. That they may know you uh, full of grace and power and truth. Help us, Lord, to embrace your kingdom. Lord, we pray for our world the wars and rumors of wars, the destruction and death and bloodshed, those who have lost it, who feel they lost it all. We pray that you be an agent of hope in these challenging times, and that you help us, Lord, to be agents of hope as well, lights in dark places. In Jesus' name we pray. And church, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>Thank you so much for watching and participating in our church service. Just some things to be mindful of. Um, we have a baptism in person next Sunday. So if you're in the area, we'd love for you to join us in person. Unfortunately, it won't be online uh, next week, but you could come and celebrate God's covenant of baptism. Also, we're getting ready for trunk or treat. Uh, so if there's candy that you want to donate, if you want to be with us on the uh, Saturday, I think it's the 29th. Uh, North Bergen to give out candy to a thousand kids we'd love to do it with you let us know in the comments write us in the emails also uh, let us know how we could pray for you we want to thank those who have given of your time and of your financial gifts if uh, Grove Church is part of your church family you could support us online at our website or by giving through the mail we want to thank you for doing that, for allowing us to be a blessing to others. We mentioned that uh, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and one of the ways we support those in our community is what we give to Women Rising uh, Shelter in Jersey City as we pray for those that are in harm's way, and we will give them practical help uh, through our benevolence ministry. We have another song of worship and some reflection questions, but before we continue, rise your head and lift your hands if you're able as you receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, now and always. Amen. See you next week.
Jesus. 